When you enter a password to sign into a website, what exactly happens there? What exactly is a site doing when it verifies if the password is correct? And what is it verifying against? Most websites don't store your passwords directly, but they hash it instead. So what exactly is password hashing? In this video, we will dive into the world of passwords and encryption and hashes and hacking and data breaches. And in the process, you will understand what password hashing is really all about. So you want to create an account on a website and you go through the register flow, you enter your email ID and it asks you to choose your password, re-enter your password to make sure you don't have any typos. And then you send this information to the web application. Now, what does the application do? Does it save your password? Well, you'd hope not, because if the app saves your password into the database directly, there are a bunch of things that could go wrong. So it's very bad. Why is it bad? Well, let's see. Someone who has access to the database can actually look up your password. They can read it. It could be an employee in the company that owns the web application, or maybe somebody hacks into that database and gains access to all the passwords. And then they could not only gain access as you in this particular application, they could try the same user ID and password to other websites and see if it works there. I know, I know, you never reuse your passwords and you always create a new password for every account. But most people aren't like that. So saving the password literally as is in the database is a bad idea. This is referred to as clear text password. That is the password string is something you can see, you can read it and you can use it. So the software industry as a whole has moved away from using clear text passwords for quite a while now. Well, there are a few exceptions of course, but for the most part, applications don't save passwords in clear text. But wait a minute, how is that possible? The application still needs to somehow save your password to authenticate you when you log in like a week after, right? If it doesn't save your password, when you created that account, how can it validate if your password is correct when you're authenticating? Well, think about it, what would you do? Okay, so when most people are asked this, the most obvious answer is, well, just encrypt the password. It solves the problem, right? When somebody creates an account, get the password, encrypt it, and save that encrypted password into the database. Later, when they try to log in, get the password they've entered, pull up this encrypted password and decrypt it, and compare this decrypted password with what the user has entered. And if someone were to steal the saved passwords in the database, they would have the encrypted password and not the actual password. Problem solved? No, the problem is not solved. Why? Well, think about how encryption works. Encryption and decryption is done by using a key value. That's a secret key that's used during the encryption to get a specific encrypted value in order to decrypt it, you have to use that same secret key to decrypt this value, okay? The same key you use to encrypt, you use that to get the exact value to begin with. You use another key and it doesn't work. Well, that should be fine. Only the app has the secret key, right? The hackers don't have the key and they might get access to the encrypted password, so there's nothing they can do, right? Well, here is the thing. The app needs to constantly decrypt passwords to verify them, right? So the app has to save the key somewhere, somewhere on the server perhaps. So now if a hacker has hacked into the system and gained access to the passwords, they can possibly gain access to the key as well. Yeah, there's a chance there. So as you can see, this is not exactly secure. This is equivalent to keep a safe in your house with all the valuables in the safe and then leaving the key next to the safe. Anybody who breaks into the house can access the key and then use that key to unlock the safe and get all the encrypted password goodness. Now you might tell me, come on Kaushik, we need the password in order to validate it. So anything the server needs to do, the hacker can access. Is there a way around it? Well, yes, there is a better approach that effectively solves this problem. This better approach is password hashing. So what is password hashing? Before that, what is hashing really? Hashing is a process that takes something like a value and then mangles it or scrambles it somehow to get another value that is unrecognizable when compared to the original value. Basically, you take a value 
and you mess it up beyond recognition. Okay, that doesn't sound too difficult. Jumbling and messing things up is something a two-year-old can do. But there are two important properties to this process that makes hashing work best for our problem of passwords. The first property, the process that you use to mess up the value needs to be repeatable. So if you mess up a value to get a particular gobbledygook value, the next time you mess up that same value, you need to get that exact same gobbledygook value, no matter how many times you do this. That is, there needs to be a one-to-one -one mapping between the value you started with and the gobbledygook mess value you end up with, okay? Second property of hashing functions is that it is a one-way function. That is, you can take a value and get a unique hash for that value, but it should not be possible to take the hash value and calculate back the original somehow, okay? Hashing functions are one way. Compare them to encryption functions, which are two way. You can encrypt and then you can decrypt to get back the original value, all right? With hashing functions, you can only hash, you cannot dehash. There are several hashing functions available that do exactly this, right? There's something called MD5, and there is the SHA algorithms, the SHA algorithms. There's something called bcrypt. And even though it has a crypt in the name, it's not an encryption function, it's actually a hashing function. So all these do what we talked about, right? One way mangling or hashing and repeatable mangling or hashing of a given value into a hash value. Okay, well, what has this got to do with passwords and security? So here's the idea. When someone registers an account in the system, the web application stores the password, not as clear text, not as an encrypted value derived from the database, but as this hashed gobbledygook value derived from the password, okay? And then it discards the actual password, done. Now the hash is a one-way function. There is no way of getting the original value back. It's gone. Okay, then how do you later validate the password when the user tries to log in? Simple, when someone tries to authenticate, you take the password that they've entered and you use the same hash function to generate the hash out of that value and then you compare it to the hash value that you've saved in the database. If the hash value matches, then the password should match. This is where we are depending on the repeatable property of the hash function. Since it returns the same value every time for a given source, we can do a comparison like this. This is the reason why most web applications have a forgot password flow, where the app asks you to reset the password. Have you ever wondered, hey, web app, why don't you just email me the password when I've forgotten it? The reason is they don't have your password in the first place. They just have the hash. So to change the password, it has to be you entering the password again, the new password, so that they can hash that and save it. So there you have it. This is password hashing. Since there is no way to reverse this, there's no way for a hacker to take this hash to get any useful information out of it. All they get is this gobbledygook hash value. And so all they can do is try a bunch of values and hash them one by one to see if any of them match the hash value. This is actually a common way to hack a hashed password system, by the way, and hackers have actually gotten pretty good at it. However, there is an additional layer of protection that most applications do, which is something called salting. Check out this tutorial where I explain what salting is and how you can make your hashed passwords even more secure.